Uh, hi, folks, and uh, welcome to the uh, Project 3 overview uh, for 3311. Okay. So uh, this project um, is focused on uh, knowing how to, uh, really the objectives are um, to understand how to convolve signals, um, especially when you have different pulse shapes. So that's part one. So the first I would say third is about that. The, the like third to a half of this project is about uh, being able to use different pulse shapes, sync first, followed by raise, uh, raise cosine and root raise cosine uh, pulse shapes, uh, followed by um, looking at the impact of intersymbol interference on pulse shapes on digital transmissions, um, followed by how do you do very simple equalization on corrupted signals. We then talk about making AM and FM and PM signals, right? Uh, using uh, the representation that we saw in the course textbook. Uh, and then finally, what we do is uh, like we, we do detection and, the and then the sort of open-ended project, if you want, at the end of the day, the open-ended question is to do super heterodyne reception, right? So let's get to it. So here's what you should find on the course Canvas website. Uh, so let's zoom in. Uh, ba, 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 ba. There we go, much better. All right, so uh, what we got here is objectives are listed out. Uh, remember, this is due on Tuesday, the 17th of November at 9 a.m. to Canvas. Please do not send this to, to me or to the uh, course tutor. And it's just one, sub, one file to be submitted, and it's the Jupyter Notebook, nothing else, okay? So everything should be self-contained in a Jupyter Notebook, right? Course objectives, how sampled information is turned into pulse shapes, I mentioned that. Nyquist pulse shapes, mentioned that. Intersymbol interference and equalization, mentioned that. Uh, different types of modulation, uh, AM, PM. Uh, FM is very similar to PM, so we won't do that here in this project. Uh, but you, you, you should be aware of it. And then afterwards, the, uh, the conversion uh, between the passband and the baseband signals, and uh, one of which is the uh, super heterodyne reception, right? So for this, for this project, and this was not installed in the original ECE3311 image, uh, you're gonna need to install the CompI libraries, okay? So what you need to do is you need to do pip3 install scikit, a hyphen compi in order to uh, properly install that. Remember again where you install it, uh, whether it's your virtual environment or if it's like, if you don't have a virtual environment, uh, if you're doing it uh, kind of like, like the environment, like, uh, you know, like uh, if it's just set up like that, like your, your actual user account. Now, uh, pulse shapes, we talked about this um, and the beautiful uh, process of you have an information source it gets turned into some sort of waveform that then is communicated across the transmission medium. And then that waveform is converted back into some sort of information that can be readily processed after the receiver. So the channel, we won't look, about, we won't look at noise, but we'll most definitely look at intersymbol interference. Okay, so uh, we actually do kind of a really cute example here in the project where what happens is, and let's switch over. We do the following. And I'll show you the sample source code in the uh, Jupyter Notebook that I distributed as part of this project. So what happens is I wrote some code. The code consists of this, right? So it's either plus A, or minus a values, so deltas, okay? And what happens is the goal is to send it through your pulse shaping filter such that you have something that might look like this. And if you sample the right places, you get And it might not be very obvious, OK? 
Okay, so just a heads up. So that corresponds to at the receiver, it would have to know. And that's part of the project is that detection part. So receive, 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 and everything in between you can discard, right? It's all about sampling that information. So let's take a look, right, uh, at that source code. Here we go. So uh, the source code, let's, can we? Yeah, that's perfect. So this is what, and let's get rid of terminal. Well, let's just be sloppy and do that. Boop. Okay. So first of all, um, this is a Jupyter notebook that's been distributed on the Canvas website. So all of you should be able to download this, right? Now, uh, you're going to need to import NumPy matplotlib. This is the compy I was telling you all about. And you're also going to need to get scipy interpolate. Now, um, if you chug through, first of all, uh, we already give uh, the interpolate function that's very similar to the MATLAB one. And the first thing that I provide is, remember that one, uh, that a and minus a thing, that train of a's and minus a's? I already generate that here, right? So this is NumPy around, so that's the, your rounding function of uniform random numbers. Um, in this case, there are 10 of them, okay? Uh, between the values of uh, one and minus one. Um, and that's what I, I do here. Uh, re and and uh, like, so uniform random number generator will spit out values between zero and one. Uh, they are rounded to the nearest integer. So it's either gonna be zero or one. I multiply by two, so it's gonna be zero and two, and then I shift everything down by one, so now I got my one and minus one. Perfect. I create, using again, NumPy is awesome, my sync pulse, right? Simple sync shape. So this is gonna be value, right? From minus 11 to 11 in increments of 0 0.1, so it almost looks continuous. Right, so the resolution is 0.1, so it's going to be this long NumPy array, and it's going to look very much like a continuous sync pulse. In reality, it's not though; it's like a lot of discrete points, right? A lot of discrete points that the human eye won't detect. So now, what I want to do is I want to take this d, right, the a's and minus a's. In this case, it's ones and minus ones, and give each one of them a sync pulse shape. So what I do, first of all, is I upsample D. So this is very important. Uh, if I were to run this right away, convolve this with this, it's gonna be a complete disaster. What you gotta have is this D has to be perfectly time aligned with this sync pulse. So let me, let me show you uh, on the, the whiteboard uh, here. If you were to take right away my, let's say, um, what the heck is it called? Uh, that D, yeah, yeah, D. It's gonna look like this. Boop, 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 right? And PS sync is going to look like this. Okay, n, I purposely choose n because these are discrete time values. So it's going to look like this. Each one of those little dashes is a point, right? Because the resolution is 0, is 0 0.1. And so on, okay? What happens is if I convolve this straight straight away, if I con convolve D with PS sync, what I'm doing is I'm convolving this thing. So let's say that's at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm taking this thing and then I'm convolving it shifted by one. Okay. Ideally, what I want to convolve is at the center of the sync pulse, right? Uh, each delta or each value here 
is, is centered there. It's time aligned there. And all these other deltas should correspond to every zero crossing. Right? That's what I want. That's what makes this thing Nyquist, right? That's the beauty of the sync pulse. But there's like a gajillion points here, and there's no points between there. So I don't get that. What I get, if I convolve that right away, is something that looks like this. So let's say that's the first sync pulse that's convolved. Then the next point, I get this. Right? And then the next sync pulse looks like this. Complete mess. And then next one, so you get my, my, my point. What I want is this. And then here, the zero crossing, I would like this. <laughs> yes. The zero crossings match. If I if I knew how to draw better, and then the next zero crossing uh, would be here. Okay, and then the next zero crossing So you get my point. So I want only one non-zero value. So let's say that's my plus A, that's my plus A, that's my plus A, and let's say I have a minus A somewhere as well. Let's do it. Let's say that's minus A over here. Yep. Okay. So on and so forth. So that's minus A. That's what I want. This, no. This, yes. So what I need to do is I need to upsample D I need to upsample D okay by by filling in uh, with the appropriate amount of zeros such that the deltas correspond to if I were to convolve that train of deltas those m ones and minus ones from D with a sync pulse I get the zero crossings to align exactly where I want them to right? And then once I got that, right? So this basically creates a vector called D upsample, which is just a zero vector. And then D, D upsample, what I do is every nth sample, I put in an element of D, 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 D. And that's what I got here, okay? Then I do the convolution between the two, knowing that they're time aligned, and then what I do here, okay, because what does convolution do? It makes, it kind of makes a mess. So, so what happens is convolution um, is like literally you're doing the convolution, but the interesting stuff is where the, the, the you know, the, the, uh, where you don't have any of the transition in and transition out of the convolution function. So, so I can truncate, I can very comfortably truncate the first 99 samples out and then leave everything after 211 out and all I get at the end of the day is this beautiful function, which I use matplotlib in order to plot. Okay. I can also extract out the desired sample using uh, NP arrange again, right? So, so I can just plug that into uh, sig1 in order to get uh, the, the recovered signals and, and, and away I go. Now, um, now the rest of the section, so section four, almost the same, except replace your basic pulse shape here, okay? NP sync with our codes filter, okay? In this here, this specifications here, 
give you an Arcos filter that have a roll off of 0.5. Uh, one thing you have to be super duper careful of, okay, is the fact that uh, with your Arcos filter, uh, the length actually might be uh, different than that of your NP sync. So the convolution is going to be different, okay? So you're going to have to be, uh, again, mindful of how, how long, okay, NP, like, you know, just to make sure that your raised cosine filter is pulse shaping correctly and you have zero crossings where they should be, okay? So you can almost use the exact same code, but you have to, again, be careful where are the zero crossings? Because if you sample anything other than your desired sample, you're not going to get your, you're not going to be able to perfectly recover your signal. Okay. Then same exact thing. This RR cos filter, that's the square root raised cosine filter, almost exact same code. What you're going to need to do, okay, in order to highlight that this is working or not, is you need to indicate on the plot, this plot here, you're gonna to need to indicate where are those samples and are they perfectly one or perfectly minus one. So don't look at the peaks. The peaks don't necessarily mean that those are your desired samples. No, no way, right? You can have a desired sample here, right? Or here, maybe here, that's a peak coincidentally, or here, or here, maybe that, maybe off here, maybe off here and there, okay? So you're gonna have to show on the plot where are your desired samples. So you actually have to um, plot another plot where the approximate samples are located. So that would basically be, you would need to plot up sample, but remember convolution um, shifts things around. So you're gonna have to figure out how much things shift by. So you're gonna have to go back to the fundamentals of how convolution works. Uh, boop. Okay. Nope. Uh, shuck. Sorry, folks. There we go. And then square root raised cosine. Now, section six is you're going to be doing ISI. You're going to do intersymbol interference. What is that? You convolve against something like this. Okay. You're going to be convolving against something like that. So let me actually switch gears. Let me go back. Boop. So I gave you the code on how to use a sync pulse and pulse shape. You're going to need to take that same code and do it with raised cosine. Here, what I would recommend doing here is use the stem plotting feature in, in um, matplotlib. It's very simple to use, very similar to like something like MATLAB, and, and make sure that it corresponds. And what you should get is exact, exactly those sampling instances. Because so what happens is those parts, and this is a way of also confirming for you that you're actually getting zero ISI. Boop, 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 boop. Every time you use those sh pulse shaping filters. So beautiful, right? And that's what question one is. So use a sync pulse shape. And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, playing around with the uh, with the raised cosine pulse shape. So same code, just do the square uh, the raised cosine pulse shape. Then do it with the square root raised cosine. So this here is the raised cosine. This here is the sync pulse. Now what happens is if you do the same thing with the square root raised cosine, you get this, huh? They're not really aligned. That's true. Because square root raised cosine pulses are not Nyquist. I just want you all to discover that. Run the, your code using now the RR cosine, uh, cos filter routine, and you're going to get magically this, which doesn't make sense. But if you then filter that again with another RR cosine filter, you're going to get this. Well, one heads up when I did that. I actually got um, the thing, the, the magnitude of the result is off by a factor of 10. That's fine. There's a normalization process when you use our cosine filters. When you have two in cascade, just divide the amplitude by 10 and you'll get exactly the sampling instances like you do here. Okay. And if you do now the filtering with, okay, with H, 
uh, oh yeah, with H, okay. You're gonna get something slightly off, that's fine. And what I would recommend to do to undo the effects of the uh, filter is you use something called SciPy. See, this is where SciPy comes in. SciPy signal L filter. Sorry, uh, uh, yeah, L filter. And what this does is this gives you, this gives you the, the um, uh, shucks. This gives you uh, the ability to implement an IIR filter, in infinite impulse response uh, filter. And so how do you do it? What happens is if H is the numerator and one is the denominator for an I FIR filter, what you do is with this specification, look for the documentation online, you use one for the numerator and H as the denominator and filter using this function, whatever is the output of your convolution with H and you will magically get a clean result over here. Boop, that's what you should be getting. So, so far, so good. So, so the documentation, very important, very, very important. Um, do not build your own IIR filter, just use SciPy signal L filter instead, okay? As for implementing the effects of the FIR fil filter model of, of, um, of, of, a, 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 um, of a channel that causes ISI, just use comp, just use the convolution operation like we've used in everything else. Okay, so now with AM, PM, and FM, okay, and so what you wanna do here, okay, so let me stop sharing. What you wanna do here, implement implement am this here's the implementation for am literally like the textbook definition right so again you're going to need to interpolate your analog signal in order to create kind of a really nice curve blah, blah, blah. and then what you want to do is use the definition so take a one vector Add it to your analog waveform. So it's th that analog waveform is M, M of T. Whoop. So you add one, so you add a bias. I didn't multiply this by AC, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to. And then multiply this by NumPy, the complex exponential, J, carrier frequency. N here is your time index, right? So that's what this thing here is. It's just basically your time indices. And your time indices here, very intentional, are really small increments, right? So n is like 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, blah, blah, blah. And then the dot real means it's the exact same thing as your real operator that we have by definition to get your passband signal, okay? And you'll get something that looks like this. Cool, huh? So you got to you got to now do this for your phase modulation. Now one very important thing when you have this 1j, j is our comp, our imaginary value. You have to multiply omega ct and and your phase term which is another argument in your exp. D don't forget don't do 1j times omega c times n plus your phase term because when you do plus your phase term, that phase term looks real, but it has to be times j. So don't forget that. Otherwise, you get completely the wrong answer. Okay. So let's look at that. Okay. So implement your own AM waveform detect. Oh, sorry. That's a detector. So just here for a, a PM, just implement PM. So you saw the AM code, you know what the definition is for a PM code, implement. Now, the detector, right, literally is step by step by step, I'm expecting you to implement this just like you would from the definition. 
So if you take that AM waveform that I just drew there, like, uh, sorry, I, I, you just saw the code in the Jupyter Notebook. Um, what I want you to do is I want, I want you to take the, uh, the product of the AM signal with itself. So take that entire wave, that, the entire signal, take the square of that signal, okay? And what happens is, um, like, uh, like what happens is you have that signal, then take a low pass filter. So you're gonna have to implement a low pass filter in Python. And they, there are several routines in SciPy that you, know, you, you can implement a very simple low pass filter. Make sure the low pass filter has a decent cutoff frequency. And then you take the square root of the output of that low pass filter to get your baseband signal. So that's part A. Okay, so you're gonna, that's the envelope removal. And then the product detector is the exact same thing. So really it's just implement the mathematics that we saw in class, in lecture, and do, this, and do it in Python. Now, last but not least, the make your own FM transmitter and receiver. What you want to do, uh, okay, so first of all, that's what your AM waveform will look like. And this, it's hard to tell, but that's what your uh, PM waveform can look like. See, there's a little bit of a, the, the periods here are closer together and here they're farther apart. And I'm not hallucinating. <laughs> so here what happens is we actually give you, we actually give you um, a data file that we want you to read in. Okay. So, so what happens is this is of an actual, an actual radio station. Okay. So what we want you to do is we you read in into Python, okay? This radio station, okay? Uh, we give you some details that it's 8-bit integer. Uh, what we want you to do is center it to, to, to zero hertz, okay? Um, and what happens is it should be at 108 megahertz, okay? Um, but, but of course what happens is it's slightly off. And what, the way you see that is we provide you with something called plot FFT IQ. You don't have to implement this yourself. So let's go and share. Here. So this here will plot for you, okay? Um, that, that file once it's read in. So here, actually, this is one way you can use NumPy and just read that data file. And again, uh, unsigned integer 8-bit. Okay. In this case, uh, this is from uh, one of my grad students who implemented this module, uh, uh, Cool Deep Gill. So it was very, very helpful. So you would, of course, have to change your path to wherever your mystery FM station is. You read it in and then it will plot for you. Likewise, the fmiqdmod function, which we provide, both of these are in Canvas as well. Uh, you would read it in and you can do the demodulation as well. Okay, and then you can actually listen to what is being played. Okay. All right. So the tasks, Manually shift it, okay? So it lands on 108 megahertz. Then remove the noise, lower the sampling rate so it's audible, okay? And uh, use a filtering and a hamming window and plot your result. Uh, then use this demod function and demodulate to baseband and uh, listen to what you hear and you could put that into the uh, comments in your Jupyter notebook. Uh, what is the end result? What does it say? Uh, what is it? What radio station is it? Okay. So the requirements for this course, again, one Jupyter notebook. So one uh, I, uh, IPYNB file uh, cannot be a zip file. It's got to be that extension or else it is not going to upload. Canvas is very finicky about that. So you have to submit this before the uh, deadline, 9 a.m. on the 17th of November. Uh, Worcester time. Worcester time. Not whatever your local time zone is if you're not in Worcester. Okay, um, make sure that the code is very well documented. If not, uh, you're gonna lose quite a few of those five additional points that are just for that 
uh, process. And make sure that you properly label everything in your Jupyter notebook, what is going on. Okay, so that, that concludes the overview presentation for, uh, for project three of ECE 3311 Principles of Communication Systems.